Welcome to the Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing. This episode, it's all about streamer fishing. Streamers are a great technique for anglers because it's an effective way to search out aggressive trout and other species. Streamers are especially appealing to fly fishers looking to catch big fish. Bigger trout eat big prey, and streamers imitate larger, calorie-laden prey like baitfish, leeches, and crayfish. There are few things as exciting on a trout stream as a huge trout exploding on a streamer. Oh, you got him! Nice! Oh, yeah, nice fish! That fish has already refused that fly. You're going to have to try just a slightly different pattern. The roll cast pickup is a great cast to use in a lot of fishing situations. This is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. Just a gorgeous little fish. I say hit that bank. Let's go to that grass bed. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing. Algoma Country. Destination Ontario. Main Office of Tourism. Yellowstone Teton Territory. Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Bahamas Tourism, Adipose Boat Works, Global Rescue, Trout Unlimited, I love fishing streamers because the strike is often explosive and visible. Oh, you got him! Nice! Streamers often take fish in high, dirty water when you can't catch fish on any other kind of fly. When you approach any given piece of water, unless the fish are rising, it's usually a toss-up as to what fly to use. Streamers can be a good choice, especially when the water is stained or dirty. Streamers are excellent searching patterns to find active fish. When you don't know the water and don't know what the fish are eating, a streamer could be your best bet. You can cover a lot of water with a streamer, and because streamers are usually fished with an active retrieve on a tight line, you don't have to worry as much about drag and getting a natural drift or reading the water. Just toss your streamer in every place that looks fishy. Streamers are often thought of as bait fish imitations, and we think that's certainly why fish take them most of the time. But there are other creatures that live in trout waters like crayfish, leeches, and even large aquatic insect larvae like giant stoneflies and halgramites. Trout probably mistake streamers for these creatures as well. But perhaps trout just take streamers out of reflex because they look like a big juicy bite trying to get away. In other words, a lure. Streamers are effective on trout for the same reasons they eat spinning lures. It's also possible that trout eat streamers because of territoriality or during spawning season because streamers look like something that might try to eat their eggs. Whatever the reason, streamers are just plain fun to fish and are the most active method of trout fishing and the closest to using lures with conventional tackle. Traditional feathered streamers are still used as are older style bucktails. Some other more modern streamers are variations of the deadly woolly bugger, a very simple but effective fly. There are literally hundreds of woolly bugger variations. Other streamers imitate sculpins, a small bait fish that lives in riffles and pools in cold, clear trout streams and is a favorite food of trout everywhere, especially big ones. There are as many types of sculpin flies as there are woolly bugger variations. Still other flies attempt to imitate leeches and crayfish more precisely. But you don't have to be that critical when picking streamers, and you don't really need to match the food forms exactly. A trout that's on the prowl for a big meal will often take the first streamer thrown at it. Should be one right there. All right. On a dead 
Whoa! Whoa! God, that's a fat fish. Looks like a little steelhead. Colors don't seem to be all that important in streamer selection, but in some places, fly fishers favor one color over another. Check with fly shops or fishing guides in your area to see what streamer patterns and colors are the most productive, but don't be afraid to experiment. Barring any advanced knowledge, the old rule of Atlantic salmon fishing, bright day, bright fly, dark day, dark fly, seems to work. In other words, if the day is dull and rainy, try a black fly. If it's a bluebird day, try a white fly. Streamers are often considered as the best fly to use when no insects are hatching, but there are times they work better than others. The very best time to fish a streamer is when a sudden rainstorm raises the water level, because in the increased turbidity, predator fish like trout have an advantage over the more maneuverable bait fish because the bait fish get pushed out of their shallow water havens. Of course, streamers work well when you see trout slashing at bait fish in the shallows. Look for a sudden eruption with tiny fish showering out of the disturbance and strip a streamer through the boils. Often, streamers don't work really well on bright days, and if the day is very bright, they may not work at all. If you want to try streamers in the middle of a sunny day, fish a smaller streamer slowly and carefully. Sometimes, just the sun going behind some clouds will stimulate a fish to take a streamer when five minutes ago they wouldn't even chase one. And some rivers are better streamer rivers than others, for reasons we don't totally understand, but probably has to do with the abundance of bait fish. If you fish streamers for trout a lot, you will probably want to invest in a six or a seven weight rod, because these line sizes will throw bigger flies better than light trout rods. You can get away with throwing smaller streamers with a four weight or a five weight rod, but sometimes you just have to work too hard to get the fly out there. In smaller rivers and shallower water, floating line will work okay. But if you get serious about fishing streamers in fast, deep water, a sinking tip line will allow you to fish more of the water where big fish hide. The streamer stripper line is perfectly suited for this as it has a short, fast sinking head with a floating line behind, which makes it easy to mend and manipulate your fly. Don't go too light on your tippet when you fish streamers. Don't forget that you're pulling one way and trout will pull the other, sometimes violently when they strike. Your tippet should be at least 3x, and with bigger flies, you might find the need to go to 2x or even 1x. Nine foot leaders are fine to use with a floating line, but you should go to a shorter six foot leader with sink tip lines to keep your fly running deeper. Now you're all geared up and ready to go streamer fishing. How should you present the fly? The basic streamer retrieve is to cast the streamer perpendicular to the bank of the river and strip it back toward you in six inch strips. That method works pretty well and imitates a prey item that has been flushed from its hideout and is trying to get away. But there are so many other ways to fish a streamer. The first thing to try is to change your retrieve. Try a slow, steady retrieve or try a couple strips followed by a long pause. The retrieve with the pause is often very effective in water temperatures below 50 degrees. Another way to fish a streamer is to just swing it like a wet fly or a steelhead fly. Cast the streamer across and downstream, make an upstream mend in your line, and then just let the line go tight in the current without any added action to the fly. You can also fish a streamer dead drift like a nymph, which we'll discuss shortly. It also pays to change the angle you cast your streamer in relation to the current. Casting upstream gets your fly deeper, and on the retrieve, the streamer flutters and pauses as you strip. Some bait fish, like sculpins, bolt downstream when frightened, so this is a realistic retrieve. In shallow water, try quartering downstream with your streamer. This presents your fly to the fish before they see the line or leader, so it's often effective on spooky fish. Whatever retrieve and angle you use, once your streamer is hanging directly downstream of you, make sure you retrieve it a few feet before making another cast. Often a fish will follow a streamer all the way across the river and a trout may still be following your fly. A streamer is often very effective when the water is so high and dirty that you can't fish with any other kind of fly. Fish won't see your fly from very far away, so look for protected places along banks, behind rocks, and at the seam on the inside of a bend in the river. 
In dirty water, make sure you add some motion to your streamer to distinguish it from twigs and leaves and all the junk that's floating by. But keep your retrieve on the slow side so a trout will have a chance to catch it in the dirty water. In dirty water, fish use their lateral line sense, which picks up vibrations in the water from prey items. So I suggest you use a fly with a deer hair head like a muddler minnow or something with lots of hackle like a woolly bugger. The rougher the fly looks, the more vibrations it will produce in the water. Dead drifting a streamer is a deadly tactic, especially in colder water. Just cast your fly in an upstream direction and retrieve line just fast enough to keep a tight line to the fly so that you can feel strikes. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Proved you wrong. I think that's a fish. It's no. Yeah, rat. it is. Is it? It's a good fish. Yeah. It is. I thought it was a snag. So did oh, I. nice fish. Rod tip up, head up. Beautiful. Woohoo! Barbless hook, it'll come right yes. out. Yellowstone Look River at how brown trout. Yellow the fins yeah, are. Aren't yeah. they beautiful? Ha! Ah, yes! That's nice. what I wanted for Tom. Thank yes. you, Molly. Oh. You can also fish a streamer or a streamer with a dropper nymph on the end under a strike indicator. This is often a deadly technique on fish that won't take a streamer fished in a conventional manner. Okay, Molly, we got a streamer and a nymph. How are we going to fish this? This is a great combination. We're going to fish the streamer in a dead drift. Lots of men's. Hopefully the fish will be attracted to the streamer and then maybe eat the smaller nymph or eat the streamer. It's a double and it, it works really well. And are we going to have to use an indicator? Um, I really like these cork strike indicators because they float really well and they've got a little bit of weight to them. They cast well. The other kind is this balloon type and I just don't think they cast as well, but they do float well. So I like both of these. That was awesome. That was weird. He attacked it. That was really strange. In two feet of water. I know, and and he, he ate that streamer. I don't know, I, either the streamer, streamer and then he ate it be. like a dry fly, like he thought it was a hopper falling in or something. Wow, that's a nice fish too. Wow, that fish was in shallow water. My God, we could have caught him on a dry. <laughs> I remember. Oh. I remember um, when I was a kid reading books. There was this about book I had trout. about the, yeah, about Dan Bailey catching Yellowstone brown trout. Well, you're doing it now, and, Tom. And uh, you know, I, I just I just had this vivid image of Dan Bailey with this beautiful butter-colored brown trout, and that picture stuck with me for years. Oh my. Man, did he eat Look that at too. his head. In shallow, shallow water. Wow. If a trout boils at your streamer but doesn't connect, try going back to the same spot with a slower or a more erratic retrieve. The trout might have thought it stunned its prey and is really looking to eat it now. If that doesn't work, you can try a different fly, but in my experience, a trout that boils at a streamer and doesn't take the same pattern with a different retrieve will not change his mind just because you change flies. Unless the water is under 45 degrees or very dirty, and fish are unwilling to move very far for a meal, it doesn't pay to repeatedly cast a streamer to the same spot. If you fish a streamer, you should cover a lot of water, placing your cast in each likely spot and then moving on. Streamers are bigger flies and that, combined with their movement, ensures that trout can see the fly on your first cast. Let's join Bill Spicer and his friend John Bobolik as they use streamers to catch trout in small ponds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, 
Nice. I think he's uh, I think he's digging into the mud here. He's going into the weeds. I have 4x tippet on here, but I uh, 4x tippet churn through a lot of weeds. Here we go. That is a terrific trout, John. <laughs> They're all good. Yeah. <laughs> They're all good. And the hook fell out, and look at that. Pull it up for the camera for us, there, John. Yeah. That's a great little trout. Yeah. Quality fish in anybody's mind. Like I say, do a little research and you'll find these little ponds. Oh, and away he goes. Oh, away he goes. The concept that you should cover a lot of water with streamers makes them perfect flies for fishing from a drift boat. Streamers and drift boats make a natural combination. You can cover scores of miles of water in a drift boat, casting to each likely spot as the guide or a buddy keeps the boat moving at the right speed. Because only a few fish in each pool will chase a streamer, usually the biggest ones, you can hit the best water and just drift through the mediocre water. Most fly fishers throw their streamers right to the bank within inches of it and then strip back to the boat. You should experiment with different retrieves and angles because you never really know what will turn the fish on. Try a fast, steady strip, then try strips with long pauses in between or slow, steady strips. If the water is high and cold, as it was here on the Yellowstone River, you might try a streamer fish dead drift under an indicator. When you fish from a drift boat with another angler, make sure you coordinate your casts and leave each other plenty of room. Generally, the oars are the dividing line. The angler in the bow never casts towards the stern or beyond the oars. And the angler in the stern never casts forward past the oars. That way, you both cover the water more efficiently and hopefully don't get tangled. The guy in the stern or the back of the boat does not want to throw beyond the oars. Number one, He's going to get caught on the oars. Number two, he or she is poaching the water of the person in the front or the bow. When the person in the front, in the bow, casts downstream and their boat catches up to the fly and the, the fly gets to the oar, then they pick up and recast downstream. And then your two anglers hopefully won't crisscross their lines. Another important thing is that the person in the back yields to the person in the front because the person in the back can see everything. The person in the front can't. When fishing streamers, the double haul is a handy technique for getting those big flies out there. So let's go to Pete Kutzer for some lessons on this important cast. Hi, I'm Pete Kutzer from the Orvis Fly Fishing Schools. Today we're going to talk about the double haul and making a quick presentation towards moving fish. There are times when we do have to gain a little bit more line speed. Let's say we're dealing with windy conditions, casting larger flies, maybe a little bit more distance, and that's when the double haul is going to come in play. Believe it or not, I use the double haul whenever I cast, say over 30 feet. It actually takes a lot of strain off of our casting hand. Uh, it makes that cast easier uh, when you're dealing with those longer distances. Before you start the double haul, you want to make sure that you can get that pick up and lay down cast consistently, nice smooth tight loops, and your shooting line consistently as well. Once you start to shoot line, then we can think about that double haul. The double haul does require a little bit of coordination. It's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. However, it's not as difficult as you might think. We can break it down into its very simple forms, but first we need to understand how this cast works. When we make a basic back cast, we're starting with that forearm, bringing that rod back, then applying that little pop to a stop or that little flick. Then when we come forward, we're doing the same thing just in the opposite direction. Think pop to a stop pop to a stop with a smooth acceleration in between. When I start to haul, the haul actually does the same thing as that flick to a stop. I'm going to lock out my wrist and just tug on the line and you're going to notice that that line starts to jump behind me and in front of me. There's one key part though we have to think about with this double haul and that's the reposition. After we tug on this line, we have to drift back to set up for that haul on the forward cast. So we come back, haul, and then drift set up, you know, maybe a haul of 18 to 24 inches, then haul and drift on the forward cast. 
haul, and drift. Come forward, haul, and drift. We don't have to reach all the way back up here by that guy. This is gonna kinda contort you a little bit, make it a little difficult to get that haul. Just up near the reel, so we're set up for that forward haul here. Haul reposition, haul reposition. When hauling, or when practicing hauling, you're gonna do the same thing. You might make a couple hauls and false cast in between, but then you wanna make that nice haul right down by your pocket, shoot that line, and that's gonna help get that line to roll out. It's a little bit more of an aggressive haul, not too much more, but that's gonna help make that final delivery cast. So we haul reposition, haul reposition, then when I deliver that cast, I'm gonna make that nice haul down by my pocket. Remember to feather that line back up underneath that finger, closing that bail, and then we can start to strip that line back in as we're fishing to those fish. One thing to remember about streamers, they work for species other than trout. Pike, muskie, and bass love to eat bait fish, which is why streamers work equally well with them. Streamers are just plain fun to fish. Presentation methods are less complicated than with other types of flies, and the fish are usually bigger, and sometimes the follows and strikes are totally visible, which really gets your heart going. God, there you go. If <laughs> <laughs> this fly hit the water, he turned, looked at it, I gave it a little tiny wiggle, and he nailed it. If streamers are so easy to fish, why don't we use them all the time? Well, for one thing, not every fish in a pool will chase a streamer, but it's usually the bigger ones that will. So if you like a more active fishing style and like to catch big trout, streamer fishing with a fly rod may become your favorite method to locate fish. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing Algoma Country Destination Ontario Main Office of Tourism Yellowstone Teton Territory Crazy Rainbow Ranch Bahamas Tourism Adipose Boat Works Global Rescue Trout Unlimited